All right, good evening, pirates and internet uh, viewers. Uh, what we are working on today, you've already learned about what heat is and what energy is, uh, but we're gonna discuss how to use those in some simple math problems. So uh, the variable that we use for heat is going to be Q. All right, and so that Q is uh, our heat energy, and it is measured in uh, calories or joules. Those are the units of our heat. So how much energy is uh, in a substance is going to be represented by the letter Q. Now, since it's the total heat, Q is the total heat within a substance, obviously, if we have uh, more of that substance, our Q is going to increase. So as Q increases, uh, the amount of substance will also increase and vice versa. If I add more substance, I'm gonna get more heat. Uh, and remember, we measure the amount of something by mass. So uh, Q is related uh, to the mass of a substance and then some other stuff right so blah 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 right next we also know that um, temperature is related to Q right and so as we heat up a substance as we heat up a substance the uh, temperature changes right so if we have a large uh, temperature change so TF minus TI sometimes we refer to that as a change in temperature or a delta T um, as we increase temperature what we end up seeing is uh, more Q because those molecules are moving around faster a lot more energy right and there's not a big uh, not a big temperature change there's not going to be a lot of energy so uh, we now know that Q is related to the substance we have and the change in temperature which is the final temperature minus the initial temperature okay and something else all right the third thing that is related to our total heat in a substance uh, is uh, what we use as is C right C is called the uh, specific heat capacity Okay. Sometimes we refer to it, you might hear it referred to as just specific heat or uh, heat capacity or all three words. Either way, they mean the same exact thing. And what that means is that every single substance has a unique specific heat capacity. Some things absorb heat a lot easier. Some things take a lot longer to heat up. So the bigger the specific heat capacity, the uh, longer it takes uh, to heat that substance up, but the more energy in total that substance can contain. So uh, for example, here you can see, here's some specific heat capacities uh, for water and ice and copper and gold and iron and aluminum, and they all have different values. They're unique and specific to that substance itself. So when we add in all of those things, right? When we add in all of those things, we can take the mass, remember M is mass, and we measure mass in grams in science. Okay, temperature and the change in temperature can be measured in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Okay, so we can measure that in degrees Celsius or Kelvin, and that means our specific heat capacity um, we can measure in uh, joules. Um, per gram degree Celsius or calories per gram degree Celsius. And um, when we put all of these things together, we get the following equation. We get Q equals M times the specific heat times the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So you're not gonna have to memorize this, but you will have to know how to use this equation. And you do need to know that energy is related to the amount of substance there is, right? Obviously, the more substance there is, the more heat that it can contain. The less substance there is, the less heat it can contain. Um, the temperature change, because as you heat something up, it gets more energy, right? And the specific heat of that substance. How much heat can that substance hold on to? Some things hold on to a lot of heat. Some things hold on to very little heat whatsoever. And you're always going to be given in a problem. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, four or five variables, depending upon if um, you are given the temperature change, which is Tf minus Ti, or you're going to be given 
uh, three of them if you're given that delta t. Uh, and then you're always going to have to be solving for one of them. So let's do a few equations, uh, two few practice problems going over these things. So one thing you might have to do is you might have to solve for q, or the total energy of a substance. I like to, on these math problems, always use the guess method. The guess method stands for what are my givens, so we look for our givens. What are what is my unknown? What is it that I'm solving for? What is the equation that I'm going to use? And then I put that all together. I substitute in the numbers that I know into the equation, and then I solve for the variable that I'm not given. All right. So let's do an example here. All right. So in number one, how many calories? How many calories would it take to raise the temperature of 200 grams of water from 5 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius. So my equation is Q equals M times C times TF minus TI. Okay, and I look through and I say, what am I looking for? Well, in this case, it's asking for how many calories. That's a unit of energy. So I'm looking, for, that's my Q. All right, my temperature is uh, 200 grams of water, so I have my mass, which is 200 grams, and my initial temperature, because from means where I'm starting from, there's my Ti, to my Tf. So now if we look at our equation, I'm given my Ti, I'm given my Tf, I'm given my mass, and I'm looking for the total energy, right? Oh wait, that means that I'm missing the C. How However, it does tell me the C because it tells me that I'm using water. And then I can look up the C on this given heat, uh, specific heat capacity table. And I can look up my heat capacity for water on this table right here. It's one. Okay? So there is all of my um, variables. I'm given one, two, three, four of them. And I have to solve for that final one. So given unknowns equation. Now I substitute. Q is what I'm looking for, so I leave it. Okay, My mass is 200 grams. My specific heat capacity is 1. Okay, My final temperature is uh, 85 degrees Celsius. My initial temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. Making sure all of my units are correct. Grams, yep. Degrees Celsius, yep degrees Celsius, yep, calories, yep, specific heat capacity, calories per gram degree Celsius, and now I can just solve. So the first thing I do, PEDMAS, I look at what is inside the parentheses, and I get 85 minus 5, that gives me 80. I have 200 times 1, just 200, so really I have 200 times 80 is equal to my Q, plug that into my calculator, I get 200 times 80 is equal to 1,000 600. Oh, sorry, I missed a zero there. It's a 16,000 uh, calories. Sometimes when I try to do things in my head, I miss a zero. So it's always a good idea to check my work. So 200 times 80, going to my calculator, 200 times 80 equals, yep, 16,000. So now let's try to solve for one of the other variables that were not given here. Okay, so uh, this these are solving for Q. I'm going to go over to these equations, and in these equations, I am looking for mass. So I go through my equation again. I look for my unknown. My unknown here is how many grams. So my unknown is my mass. And then I look for my givens. My givens is from 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So that's my Ti and my TF. I'm given 350 calories. That's my Q. Okay, and uh, I'm given water as my substance, so that gives me my C. So I have now all of my variables accounted for, my unknown variable plus my four given variables. I write my equation, Q equals M times C times TF minus TI. I'm going to zoom in and I start substituting. So Q is equal to 350. My mass is what I am looking for, so I leave it. 
my C is my specific heat of water, which is 1. Okay. My final temperature is 30 degrees. My initial temperature is 10 degrees. Okay, so I start uh, simplifying this equation. Uh, the 1 can drop out because anything times 1 is itself, so I don't have to worry about that. I do PEDMAs inside of the parentheses, and I get 350 is equal to my mass times 20. Okay, now I have mass times 20 on one side of my equation, but I don't want it. I want mass by itself, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide both sides by 20, and I go to my handy-dandy calculator. These 20s cancel. I go to my handy-dandy calculator, and I get 350. I'm going to clear it all the way out. I get... Oh. I get 350 divided by 20. And that gives me 17.5. So 17.5 is my mass, and my units are in grams. Okay. So now let's try another equation in which we are going to be looking for the specific heat of a substance. Boom. All right, so in this case, we're given 500 calories. We're given 50 grams. We're given the temperature rise of 20 to 42, and we're looking for the specific heat capacity right there. Okay, so I'm going to write in all my variables. I have mass, oops, sorry, that's not mass. I have mass here, I have energy there, I have my initial temperature here, my final temperature here, and my C is what I'm looking for. So once again, I'm gonna zoom in. I write my equation, Q equals M times C times delta T or TF minus TI. And I start plugging in my values. So Q is 500 calories. My mass is 50 grams. My C I leave because it's what I'm solving for. My TF is going to be uh, 42. My TI is going to be 20. And I start simplifying and uh, solving for C. So I do what is inside the parentheses first. I get 500 is equal to 50 times C times 42 minus 20, which gives me 22. Okay, now I need to simplify the right-hand side. So I'm going to take 50 times 22, go to my calculator, 50 times 22 equals 1,100. 1,100 times C is equal to 500. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 1,100. Go to my calculator, I get 500 divided by 1,100. And that gives me approximately 0.45 so my C is equal to 0 0.45, and then the units for it is going to be calories divided by grams degrees Celsius, and I put my units here, calories divided by grams degrees Celsius. All right, that's how you solve for your C. All right, temperature is probably the hardest because we have that pesky uh, parentheses to deal with. So we have to worry about distributing. We have to worry about knowing, are we looking for the temperature change? Are we looking for the initial temperature or are we looking for the final temperature? All right, so in this case here, we are looking for the final temperature. Okay, we have uh, 25 grams of brass at 20 degrees Celsius and 200 degrees or 200 calories. So we're looking for our TF. We're given our mass. We find our C here. So that's the C we're using. At 20 degrees Celsius, that's my initial temperature. That's where I'm starting at. And then Q is 200 calories. Okay, I write my equation. Q equals MC 
tf minus ti. Let's zoom this in a little bit, make this a little bigger. And I start subbing in everything I'm given. I'm given 200 as my Q. My mass is 25. Okay. My C is 0 0.092. My TF is what I'm looking for, minus my TI, which is 20. Okay. And now this time, since my TF is inside the parentheses, I don't do what's in the parentheses first. I have to solve what's outside the parentheses and then distribute that in. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to take 25 times 0 0.092. So 25 times 0 0.092 equals 2.3. So I have 200 equals 2.3, okay, times TF minus 20, okay, and then I distribute that 2.3 into my equation. So I get 200 is equal to 2.3 times my TF minus 20 times 2.3. gives me 46. Okay. So since this is a subtraction, I now need to add 46 to both sides of my equation. And I get 246 is equal to 2.3 times TF. And then I divide both sides of my equation by 2.3. And that gives me 106.95, which is just about 107 degrees Celsius is my final temperature. All right, so it just takes a lot of practice to know how you're doing the math, your order of operations, figuring out which variables you're given and which variables you're looking for. Uh, but it's more than within your reach as long as you keep practicing and keep trying to do the best you can. So that's how you do uh, heat equations. Remember, Q equals M times C times parentheses TF minus TI. And just keep practicing. I'll see you next time, Pirates. Have a good day.